Hey everyone, it's Peter Kirk from Rock Day Dream Nation, and I've got some of my favorite panelists back. I've got Joe B. How are you going, my friend? Doing well. Thanks for having me on again. Not a problem. And John the Music Nut, how are you? I am well, Peter. How are you? And thank you for having me back too. Not doing too bad. It's warming up in Australia, 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're certainly getting into summer. Looking forward to it. So Very good. Also looking forward to talking about one of my favourite bands, which I haven't really covered on Rock Day Dream Nation, Scorpions. And I thought it was long overdue. So what we're going to do today is cover our three favourite Scorpions albums. May not be the best Scorpions albums, but just three albums that are close to our heart. We're going to talk about why we like it, um, spotlight some songs and just have some fun over the next you know, 40 minutes or so. So what I'll do just to start things off is I'll throw to each of you guys and tell me what was your actual first encounter with the Scorpions and impression. So, Joe, what was your first encounter with Scorpions? Well, I actually saw their first U.S. show. Wow. And they play, yeah, nice. they played at Chicago Fest in 1979, I believe. Yeah, it was when, when Love Drive was first uh, released. Uh, we knew that Michael Shaker was on the album, we, but there were rumors whether or not he was actually in the band. So we were, it was, it was at the old Navy pier in Chicago and it was on a floating stage. And for a couple songs, we saw this blonde guy on stage. We're like, Oh my God, that's Shaker. But it was actually Francis Buchholz. But it was, that's, that was my first introduction, the love drive album. I didn't know anything about him. And then subsequently I went back and bought the um, Tokyo tapes album just to hear their back, you know, back catalog. Cause they played on that show. They played quite a few songs from their catalog. Yeah. You know, back, back before they got, uh, when with Uli John Roth, but as soon as animal magnetism was released, they dropped all those songs from the live set. And it was like love drive was their first album, but that was my first, yeah, that was my first introduction. I saw them their first show in the U S um the love drive album was played heavily uh i i'm part german so i was like all in i'm like oh wow there's a german band and michael Schenker was a god in chicago and i think that's a lot of reasons why he got the radio live love drive got the radio play because ufo and michael Schenker were huge in the chicago area nice well always good to get a few concert nuggets from you joe yeah no that's great john the music now what was your first encounter with scorpions and impressions um, hearing Still Loving You on Rock 107 back in 1982. And uh, they did have a video off for that. And I didn't see that until a little bit later because we didn't have MTV in the house until 84. But I liked them from the get-go. Um, when I joined RCA, later BMG Music Service, Animal Magnetism and Blackout were two of my six for a penny. And from then, I just really adored their music and and then I worked backwards as well, and I really adored the albums with Roth as well. It took me a long time to get into the albums with Roth. By the time I was like in my late 20s, I got it. So, so it took quite a while. Um, and those are ones that that ring more to me these days, but I still have a lot of fond memories of the song, the albums that I discovered that I discovered them. And of course, Rock You Like a Hurricane was a huge hit, and that was all over MTV and all yeah. over the radio in 84. All right. Well, we won't let too much out of the bag, John, because I'm sure you're going to be going deep into the catalogs. I'm looking forward to hearing hearing you well, well, that. About it. you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, as for me, a guy at school lent me a tape. Um, Scott in uh, I think it was in physics, lent me the tape of Love at First Sting, and I was hooked. So um, just needs a, an exchange of a, a metal tape in the uh, in your teenage years, and that's the thing that you grab onto. The second album I actually heard was In Trance. So I actually went back to the ride back in time to 1975 and sonically very different. So, and I've just been exploring the catalogue ever since. Um, I haven't had the... Um, fortune to see them live because every time i'm about to see them klaus has either had uh, an appendix operation or throat problems so one day i'll get to see them it's just one of those misfortune type scenarios so all right enough about me joe what's your first album that you'd like to spotlight 
So scorpions. You, know, you, talk, you talk about the, you know, so I, I, I find out about the band with love drive and then I get the Tokyo tapes. So obviously live elms are disqualified here, but it just, it, I found them to be so weird. And so this, it, this, there's this window where they, they were one of my favorite bands, but then they are not one of my favorite bands. So I'm going to be talking about this certain window of time where they were one of my favorite bands, but it was so weird because you had this, Rudolf Schenker, um, you know, written songs, but you had this lead guitarist that was basically copying Jimi Hendrix, even the way he dressed and played, even to the fact that he lived with Jimi Hendrix's ex-girlfriend. So bizarre. But um, going back into that early Uli John Roth era, I would have to go with my number three album. I'm going to go with Taken by Force. And it was hard. It's, it was really difficult to pick an album from there because I, you know, as I said, Tokyo tapes had was like a greatest hits of all those albums. So I like all those songs, but I would say steam rock fever is just a great lead off song. We'll burn the sky is awesome. But the song that really makes this album uh, stand out for me is sales of Sharon. It's just so cool. And it's such a great song. And it's one of my favorite Scorpions tunes. It's got a great, it, it's Uli John Roth esque. It's the band all coming together. I think it's one of their best songs. Um, another thing about the Scorpions, too, back with, you know, lyrically back in this time is they're really ahead of their time. They had that, uh, like, he's a woman, she's a man, you know, right? It's just, you know, I mean, you know, it's just they went into these weird um, <clears throat> taboo subjects, but it made it an interesting song and just uh, interesting listen. But Taken by Force is, is coming in at number three for me yeah that's a really great album and it's got some interesting sort of sonic um choices like there's one song like semi reggae um, right yeah, yeah it's 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 got a really broad musical landscape on that album i like that a lot john the music nut well i'm going with lover first thing for my number three now for a long time it was my number one I, even though this is their most popular song album, biggest selling album in the US, it hit number six, but it sold more copies than Crazy World, which had a bigger hit on it. I think this album has legs. The songs that hit radio, of course, were Rock You Like a Hurricane, Still Loving You. They were fantastic. But I love the deep cuts. I love Coming Home. I, and I love it more on the original. Because you got that slow burn, whereas where you hear it on Worldwide Live, it just goes right into the heavy part. I always love coming home. I love as soon as the good times roll. That is a mid tempo melodic scorcher. Love it. And the Big City Nights, of course, was a huge hit, and that got a lot of video play as well. I'm leaving you. They put a video out for, but they didn't put a single out. But it could have been a hit if they put it out as a single as well. So, yeah, this is more melodic Scorpions, the Scorpions that most people know and love, but I have, it's always going to be in my top five somewhere, and today I'd probably put it at number three. Love it first thing, 1984. Nice take. Thank you. And perhaps more about that later. Um, all right, I am going to <laughs> Scorpions in Trance. I love this album. It's Come, came out in 1975. It's very European. It, I love European hard rock because it kind of um, has one foot in the neoclassical and then one foot in the late 60s, early 70s. That album is very much influenced by Heap, Zeppelin, Purple, but it puts its own spin on it. It's got raw, crunchy production and a lot of reverb, and I love Uli's um, guitar playing. He does all these little Hendrix dive bombs. His licks just absolutely soar up and down the fretboard. I love Dark Lady, so I'll spotlight a few songs. Dark Lady. Um, I love it where he does that vocal exchange between him and Klaus. Um, and uh, Uli, I think, does, does two vocal tracks. Um, he makes all, as I said, does all these dive bomb sounds, Hendrix-like tone. Um, it's just got a punchy opening riff. I love In Trance. Um, Klaus sings beautifully on this album. 
even though even if it's double tracking i I could do triple or quadruple tracking with klaus i love i love his vocals but it, it just sounds so pure top of the bill that twin harmony guitars between Rolf and Schenker. Um, Robot Man, I love that little, that sort of rolling riff that has a kind of gets into that typical Scorpions groove. And you've got that vocal effect for Klaus's, uh, you know, vocals. And it's really interesting. And Night Lights, an atmospheric um, instrumental with, I believe, Mellotron. See all these interesting sort of choices, yeah. but how how could I describe it? It's it's got that very European sound to it, where not only they look at influences of uh, you know rock music, but they probably go back to Bach and Beethoven. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, like from a melody um, perspective, it's just kind of unique, and um, that's my you know one of my favorite uh, Scorpions albums. All right. Next one, Joe B. Yeah, just going to in trance, uh, Dark Lady, the the vocal exchange, I absolutely love. So you're spot on there. Top of the bill, I think that Rudolph resurrected that song and wrote Rocky Like a Hurricane. <laughs> I just think he took that song and reworked it. Right? Absolutely. And but, one more thing yeah. I, I just want to quickly add is they, they do these little uh, snippets of these songs. I've seen them live on YouTube, but they do it in a melody. And that's yeah. one of my little gripes. I don't like melodies. I think John the Music Nut, you're not a fan of the 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 token melody in rock shows. I just wish I they would just do them, just bring out the actual song and play it because there's some great tracks. Agreed. Yeah. So my one and two are just neck and neck. In fact, this was going to be number number one, but I dropped it to number two, and I'll go into it when I pick my number one. But my number two is Love Drive, and it was my introduction to the band. Michael Shanker's on it. It's got some just crazy great licks. Like Loving You Sunday Morning is just amazing. Another piece of meat is just a great rocker. Uh, Coast to Coast is probably my favorite Scorpion song, which I don't know if that means I really don't. I don't know if it's a slight on Klaus Meine because it's a uh, instrumental, but I just love Coast to Coast. It's just so cool. Um, I can't get enough, of course, another great rocker. And they have the, you know, they have the mellow songs, holiday. Uh, is there anybody there is more of like a, that reggae um that you brought up before? Uh, but Love Drive, another great tune. Um, just by a hair, it's my number two album, and it was my introduction. It's got it. I love the album. I love that um what is that hypnosis or they did the UFO covers. They do this album cover. It's a very strange cover, but I like it. Um, I mean, if, especially for a, well, how old was I? 15, 16 years old. I thought it was a kick-ass album cover. Just a, it's just a great album featuring Michael Shanker playing with his brother. Um, my number two, but just by a hair. Well, there you go. Can't wait to hear your number one. John, the music nut, what's your second pick? Love Drive. There you go. It's one of those great um, segue albums from one sound to the next because they became a different band when Matthias Chaps came in. This is, if you want variety, this is the Scorpions album for you. You got a little bit of everything here and it's all great. As Joe indicated, is there anybody there when it, I love this era of music when you had rock bands putting a little bit of reggae in their sound. Rush were doing it. Scorpions were doing it. The police were doing it a lot. It's, it was Priest just a wonderful it. Judas Priest. Yes. That's true. Yeah. They did it also. On the they British did. Steel, wasn't it? British Steel? Yeah, it would have been the Rage. Yeah. That's what it would have been. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but oh my gosh, yeah. You got wicked rockers like the title track another piece of meat just take grabs you by the throat and doesn't let go can't get enough is super heavy um and then you got it always somewhere is uh close to a ballad not quite but very melodic it's awesome holidays to ballad and then on here you got they have the the extended version where they go into the long for the sun part which they usually don't do live but um what else do you have coast to coast is a fantastic instrumental love new sunday morning is wonderful i mean everything on here is a gem 
And the band loved this album too. They still do Coast to Coast. They still do Holiday. Mm, they do. And you had a lot of these tracks were on, excuse me, you had a lot of these tracks on the Worldwide Live album as well. That's actually when I discovered these songs. Yeah. But yeah, top to bottom, killer album. Yeah. Love Drive. That's my number two. 1979. Just a quick question for you folks. Um, Worldwide Live or Tokyo Tapes for you? What's what's the better live album? I love Tokyo Tapes. Yeah, me probably too. I'm more a Worldwide Live guy, and it's by a hair, and it's only because I'm not a fan of late 70s albums that have cover songs on them. Right. It's a the it's covered awesome. songs on Tokyo Tapes are absolutely brutal. That is the weak spot. When they go into Long Tall Sally and all that crap, yeah. it's it's awful. Yeah, but other than that, it's it's a great album. Yeah, yeah. every 70s right. band was seen to be doing it, like Uriah Heat with Blue Suede Shoes. It seemed to be um, Queen. A, a, a bit of a, a thing in the 70s that uh, let's do some 50s rockers. Long Tall Hound Sally Hound or Hound you know, Heartbreak well. yeah. Hotel. Yeah. 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 All right. Ah, it's me. So uh there you go. That's my next pick. Love it first sting. One of the very first digitally recorded heavy metal albums, and it sounds beautiful. It's brutal. The separation of instrumentation is just um sublime. Um, got to do a shout out for their longtime producer of 10 years, Dida Dirks, the quiet man. I've watched a few YouTube interviews with him. He's very quietly spoken, um, very unassuming, but um, he's a big, valuable player in the whole Scorpion story. And he was right back there in the 70s until their international success. I mean, this is a fantastic album. Um, Bad Boys Running Wild, what an opener. Punchy, aggressive, hard rock. It's the prototype for um, hard rock in, in the 80s. Um, look, Scorpions could barely get arrested in Australia, but I would imagine in America this album was just played to death. I'm doing my research, it went to number six. It's um, I think it went platinum three times, and it was in the charts for a considerable period of time. So... This was the album that conquered America. Rock You Like a Hurricane, that's like their Here I Go Again. It's the iconic signature song. So you hear it on commercials, probably see it on NFL. I don't know, Joe B. Um, you hear it in movies. It's the riff. It's one of the most iconic riffs from this band. Lyrics are a little bit, bit, bit daffy. And I've done other shows about that. Like some of the lyrics are a little bit questionable, the Scorpions, but you kind of forgive it because the musicology of this album is just so great and they're on fire. Um, I want to, I like the deep cuts as well. I really like um, Still Loving You. Is that regarded as a deep cut, John the Music Nut? It was a single here in the US. It was the second single. But uh, it's it, sort of uh, a deep cut. It doesn't get it, spoken about much, does it? It's my yeah. wife's favorite Scorpion song. <laughs> I find it kind it, was, of it was played. Yeah. Yeah. They still play it live now. Yeah. I think it's one of their finest ballads. And Klaus is really showing some raw emotion. You know, like there are some singers that do ballads. They're just going through the motions and it's just, you know, ticking a box. Let's do the obligatory ballad. I think this is one of their finest um, songs per se, and there is real raw emotion in Klaus's um, vocals. Big City Nights, that was another single, a um, video clip that's really punchy. Coming Home, how it just starts off like a ballad and then it metamorphoses into a really speed rocker, really punchy. Um, yeah, look, I just think this was their, uh, that this was their high point where they literally conquered the world and I don't think of, I can't think of any other German hard rock heavy metal band that has sold more records or hit did as successfully at least in America. Can you think of any others? I mean, except and, came yeah. close, but no, no, not not commercially. Uh, and no. they only had one gold album in the states, and that was yeah. it. But yeah, yeah. 
And I'm I'm a believer that I think German is the epicenter of heavy metal, um, arguably. And this these bands you've got to uh, Scorpions you've got to talk about them. And this album is one of the ones that would strengthen that ar- argument. So I always found it interesting that they right off the bat they recorded in English. Where it, it, like it, I just look at a band like Loudness, who I you know I got into Loudness's early albums, and they're all in Japanese, and they're great. And mm. So you think they sound better when they sing in Japanese, but yeah, it was, it's interesting they went straight in. I know English was taught in West Germany, um, so it was, you know, well spoken. Well spoken. Mm. I traveled over there at the time, but yeah, it's interesting that they never did, they never did an album in German. It was all it was all in English. Yeah, well, I think they had a, a plan that they did want to conquer the world and just go outside Germany, and a lot of. Um, German artists that I've heard interviews with say that English um, fits in better in a in a in a pop song or a rock song than German, and yeah. um, maybe that's that's the reason why. Um, I remember we, we went to well, I'll go before I go to my number one. Album, we I went to Germ- West Germany uh, in high school, and we were we took German. It was through the German club, and we tried ordering our meal at a McDonald's and the girl behind the counter is just like, just speak English. I can't eat your, your German's terrible. And then her English was even better than ours. It was, it was very proper where we had the stupid Chicago accent, but <laughs> so, I mean, I, they they were taught German from, you know, probably kindergarten on. So, I mean, taught English as well as German. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as I said, there, there are some lyrical choices that I find a little bit dubious. And I just well, have to relate it to the uh, yeah. to the, uh, the, the that translation. Well, I don't want to go in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They had, well, they had some dubious album covers and albums. Oh, and yeah, absolutely. And Hypnosis um, and yes. some other ones that are, are banned to this day, and rightfully so. They're, yeah, they're, sorry, yeah, pretty, pretty bottom feeder. Yeah. Yes. Um, but um, look, getting back to this, I think this is just a, a just a fine album, and I like it a lot. And that was their their high point, and I don't think they were ever quite as successful. All right, Joe, what's your first? My number pick? one is uh, Animal Magnetism. So I was all in after this, uh, and I said this is by a hair. Uh, it was the follow up to Love Drive. It just went along the same path, but Michael Shanker's not on it, so Matthias Jobs is there. Great quote from Matthias Jobs right around this point. Um, he said. When he, we asked him about Uli John Roth, he said, uh, you know, I like Jimi Hendrix too, but I, I don't want to be him. <laughs> you know, it, so he kind of, you know, it was kind of a little jab to Uli because Uli went into his solo uh, at this time, his solo albums. But yeah, I, I love Make It Real, uh, Don't Make No Promises, Hold Me Tight, 20th Century Man, Lady Starlight's another great slow song. Here's the one I want to, I love this song and Eddie Van Halen should get sued for copyrights because falling in love, the beginning of falling in love, he stole note for note for taking uh, top of the world on, on the, uh, on the unlawful car Connell knowledge album. And it's also the ending of jump. So I'm wondering, I know, and I know he listened to the scorpions and they covered old scorpions when they were in the clubs, so I wonder, he he definitely ripped it off note for note. Listen to the two songs together, the beginnings. But I wonder if Jump even was formulated from this song and he was, you know, and turned it into a keyboard and lightened it up a little bit. But Falling in Love's a great tune. But Eddie Van Halen definitely rips off the beginning. Uh, the Zoo is a classic. That got played constantly, constantly. It still does. If you listen to Sirius Radio and and on uh, Ozzy's Boneyard, you constantly hear the zoo. It's a show animal stopper. Yeah, Animal Magnetism. Um, one of my, f- it's a great song, but one of my favorite movies of all time is The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke and the beautiful Marissa Tomei. And there's a scene with Marissa Tomei as a stripper and she dances to Animal Magnetism. So it's one of my favorite scenes from one of my favorite movies. So that elevates this album. That's what really elevated it to number one, the song Animal Magnetism. Um, yeah, it's great. I mean, just by hair over love drive, but uh, this is where, this is that window where Scorpions were definitely a, one of my favorite bands. Yeah. For sure. And I say that Mickey Rourke got ripped off by not getting the best acting Oscar that year. Oh, you yeah. Know. It was, it was. How, how did he get ripped off? I don't know. That's I a know. great movie, a great performance. And I love when they're riffing about hair metal and he goes, why don't they play good music like rap? 
Yeah, yeah. And I think I he, he does a riff on um, on Motley Crue, doesn't Kurt he? Kurt Cobain, and yeah, he he goes Cobain like messed everything up, and yeah. yeah. I actually thought that Mickey Rock would go on with it because I'm a big Mickey Rock fan. Sorry, guys, I'm just going off on a tangent. Uh, me too. I thought yeah, I thought I, that was going to kickstart his career, but nothing. Um, I think he had one. Um, it did a. Did he do um, Iron Man two as a villain, and that was it? Right. Gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah I like those eccentric uh, types. So yeah, yeah. But that's a great movie. But this is yeah, that's my number one. Just because uh, I just by a hair. If you listen to um, right now, when you're done listening to this, listen to uh, Falling in Love, and then listen stand what is standing on top, whatever top of the world on uh, top of the world. So, yeah, it's the same exact riff. Yeah. And animal magnetism, uh, that just elevated it by a hair over uh, Love Drive. Nice, nice. Hey, John, have you ever seen uh, The Scorpions live? Twice. I mm. saw them in 96. It was a co-headline with Alice Cooper. It was a great show, and there was hardly anybody there because it was right at the height of grunge. And bands like Scorpions, Alice Cooper, Iron Maiden, Juice Priest, we can go on and on and on. They couldn't play the big arenas anymore. They mm. a lot of them were a lot of them were playing the clubs again. Mm. Or Dio, uh bands like that. I mean, it was all about grunge and industrial was starting to take hold too. So there may have been okay, a twelve thousand seater. It was an outdoor venue. If there were two thousand people there, they would have been lucky. But it was a great show. They were both spectacular that night. And that was the first time. The second time was 2017, and Megadeth opened. That was a very good show as well. And in fact, we mentioned Love at First Sting. They played five songs off Love at First Sting that night, and the dreaded Uli John Roth medley that we were talking about earlier. That was a great (laughs) tour, though. I, I it, agree. It was. Yeah. 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 Another thing about your current uh, Scorpions, I heard an interview with Mickey D a few years ago, and he actually said it's more taxing to play the Scorpion songs than it was for Motorhead. He said Motorhead, he could just riff because he's got to play to a track, and it's just, it, he says it's brutal on him physically, playing to that click track and keeping a beat, which I, you know, you think Motorhead would be more taxing because it's all over the place, but yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. That's an interesting take. And plus, there's a little bit more um, variety rhythmically um in the scorpions because there's different time signatures um no disrespect to motorhead but, but they're fairly straightforward put meat and potatoes you know um you know fast <laughs> but um the scorpions have all these different sort of rhythm rhythm changes um but um interesting all right john what's your pick well as far as animal magnetism and that scene in the wrestler uh i completely co-sign for the rest of my life when i hear that song i'm gonna think of that scene but i'm not gonna go with that album i'm gonna go with an album that at one point i wouldn't have been able to show to cover version killer 1976. to me this is the apex of the early john roth era Mm. although i love in trance too and taken by force as well here they were really getting their songwriting skills down they were starting to write great three three and a half minute songs picture life is a spectacular opener i love the kamikaze leads during the verses from only john roth i love the anthemic chorus in it catch your train rips i mean that is just killer you got more great dive bomb solos from Uli. In Your Park is moodier. Love that. Backstage Queen, very catchy and melodic. Virgin Killer, what a riff. And this is one of the three albums that you have Uli on vocals. Now, Uli to me is the ginger baker of singers, of lead guitar players that sing. You know where I'm going, Joe. Talent out the wazoo can't sing for anything. Does but he sing better than Eddie Van Halen? He probably does, actually. <laughs> I like his voice, but I can understand why most I'm talking about Uli John Roth now. 
I actually like his voice. It's just so different. Um, I mean, he doesn't sound like Klaus Main. No, mm -hmm. not in the same uh, stratosphere. But when he sings, I don't know. There's it, just a different dimension to her songs. Um, but uh, and he sings on Hellcat. I love Hellcat. You want some crazy, silly vocals, <laughs> um, silly lyrics, rather. There you go with Hellcat. Polar Nights is spectacular. I love it. That slow burn, the volume just keeps going up as the song kicks in. And this is another Uli song. This is this is very Hendrix like, but I don't think Hendrix was ever this wicked. I don't think he ever made a song that was this raging. Uh, Crying Days and Yellow Raven are two ballads, but they're very atmospheric. I love the end of Yellow Raven. That's the last song on the album. The thing about Uli is he does these kamikaze solos, but when he plays slow, it's so majestic. Like, listen to the end of In Trance, that guitar line. It's majestic. Same thing with Yellow Raven. You know, top to bottom, I think this is a spectacular album. Easily, I don't know if I could say easily my number one, because I have about five albums that I'd rank between a nine and a half and a ten for this band. Yeah. Um, but Virgin Killer is wonderful. Wonderful yeah, absolutely. Album. Nicely said. And as Thank for you. album covers, the original album cover, I'd give a, a minus 10 out of 10. Yes. And that album cover, probably a 3 out of 10. It, right. It sort of lets it down. Um, but uh, the as for the, the material, it's top notch. Yeah. All right. Well, my number one is... 1982 and blackout which was their commercial breakthrough in america went to number 10 and uk number 11 single platinum now this album um the genesis of this album had some issues because klaus mine had some polyps on his vocals so uh dita dirks um basically said that, that uh, they brought in don dokken who at that period of time was a little known musician and he was doing the vocal tracks so they were recording the album but no Klaus it was um Don Dokken coming off the bench and helping but um he got the vocal problems uh, the polyps uh, resolved and sang beautifully on this album and um, to be quite frank he sings nice today He's one of those vocalists that um, I've seen a lot of footage of him and um, he, you know, for his age, he's mighty fine um, comparative to a lot of um, people of his age. But getting back to Blackout, this Pound Per Pound has some great songs. Like you've got the original Blackout, the song. Um, it's got a great riff and you've got Schenker with this taut rhythm chords. You've got to, you know, Schenk is a very valuable player of this band. Just He kind of anchors it all in with his rhythm playing and, you know, the little riffage where he exchanges with the, the various guitarists and jabs. He just peppers the songs with all these little quirky riff lines. He, he kind of dive bombs in. So Schenk is just playing the, um, the chords and he just interweaves these little quirky uh, riffs. It's just great. Count Live without you how was that not a hit in the us um joe that should have been top 10 that would have been played on rock radio at least wouldn't it sorry i'm it got a quick question to you yeah, yeah it, it, no it was definitely played but the song was uh no one like you that was really the hit yeah, but, but can't live without you it's so punchy and catchy i was just it, thinking this could be how did this not go top 10 in in right. you know in the pop charts at least um no one like you. That's the, that was the breakout song, right? In America, um, yes. Rudolph was saying, "This is a quote in respect to the song. We see things in a different way. We explain things differently and go deep inside with the music and the lyrics." So that was his take on this song, and um, what to him made the Scorpions so special. Um, Dynamite. I love that upper vocal register wail. Klaus is really giving the polyps a, you know, he's he's showing I've I've recovered. He's wailing and just using that upper register. He's really going for the throttle. Uh, China White 
has that really slow grinding riff. And I was, I wrote down just as a note, I can imagine Tony Iommi going, hmm, I'd love to play that song, that real sludgy, sludgy riff. Now, question mark, that choppy guitar, the staccato. And um, again, Klaus is just using that upper range. So um, I just think it, this album to me is the last of the old Scorpions because when they went to Love at First Sting, it was like a new chapter. It was all digital. It was very shiny and very precise. Everything was in the right way. This album to me had its foot still in 70s classic rock and hard rock. And I think it had a little bit of an ear to the new wave of British heavy metal. So it's got that sort of style. And that's why, you know, it's got all the elements that I gravitate to. And that's why it's my favourite album by The Scorpions. By the way, I keep on saying The Scorpions. Sorry, folks. I've just been saying that since 1984. I know it's Scorpions. But I can't help it by saying The Scorpion. It's, it's just something yeah. I just... I'll go to a psychiatrist. I'll try to get a fix. But I just can't help it. I keep on saying The do you have bands like that, guys, that you just can't help by saying? No, I mean, I, say, I I think half the time I say the Scorpions and say Scorpions, and yeah, it's yeah. it's just natural. Yeah. yeah. Um, any honorable mentions that you want to throw in, Joe? Yeah, B? I you know, so I uh, love at first Sting got so overplayed, and I was getting into so many other bands, but I actually really love Savage Amusement. I. I think it's, I just, I don't know. I, I, it was, I wasn't expecting much from it and uh, I thought it was really cool. And I thought it was um, kind of a darker sounding album and it wasn't as uh, commercially successful. So as, as far as a dark horse album, I would pick that. And then anything from the Uli John Roth area. I mean, I, I could have picked any of those albums. Like I said, it, when I go back to that, it, it, you know, I bought love drive, then I bought Tokyo tapes. So Tokyo tapes had all the, all the best, the, the best aside from, um, uh, which I'm call it the, um, uh, sales of Sharon, which is not on there, which is one of my favorite songs, but yeah, I, I, I for one album that really stands out that it doesn't get a much praise. I like savage amusement. Yeah, yeah, look, that, that's got its moments. Um, that was a commercial disappointment, wasn't it? Um, yeah. I think the, the problem with that album is, is it maybe took a little long to come out. I think it took about three or four years. Yeah, four years in the 80s in metal or hard rock is a long time. And um, I think that if it came out two years earlier instead of 87, if it came out in 85, um, it may have done much better, but it's got a lot lot to admire on that album, um, production-wise and song-wise. And, uh, yeah. What about you, John? We've pretty much covered them all. I mean, to me, I'm, take, I'm sorry, Fly to the Rainbow's got a lot of good songs on it, even though they were still trying to find their sound. Um, what I really love about the early stuff with Roth is... Um, Francis Bullcoles' counter bass lines on some of those songs are spectacular. And you hear a lot of that on um on Fly to Rainbow, and you hear a lot about a lot of that on In Trance, particularly song Longing for Fire. Um, so I'm gonna fly to the rainbow. Crazy World was pretty good too. I think um I don't think it was as consistently strong, but the highs were really high. I thought Don't Believe Her and um, tease me, please me were pretty good songs. They were at this point, they were completely Americanized, but I mean, they were, there was some good stuff on there hit between the eyes. I thought was very good. Um, so yeah, I would crazy world, savage amusement. Certainly I thought it was a little glossy, but there was some good stuff on, it. you know, um, every minute, every day I thought was very good. I believe in love. I thought should have been a hit and, and, and the first single, um, Rith Rhythm of Love. Rhythm of Love really jumped out at you. When that song came out, I thought that was going to be another big one. Not not quite on the same level as Rocky Like a Hurricane, but I thought that might at least graze the top 40, but it only hit like 75 here in the States. And it seemed like it, that halted their momentum. So yeah, those albums there. And the newest album, Rock Believer, I thought was quite good as well. 
I got yeah, was, I wanted to get you guys' uh, opinion on that album. I, th- I thought it was a really good effort for uh, modern day Scorpions. And well, when they played there, I know my friend went to go see them in Las Vegas for the residency. They played quite a bit of songs off of that. That's my that's- honorable mention, Rock Believer. That was in one of my top 10 picks from last year. Um, I just thought they, they were back. Um, maybe, you know, side two is just perfect scorpions it really encapsulates the classic scorpion sound so they really got their mojo on that album um i think it was a a, a mighty fine return to um you know scorpions rock because i think over the last 10 years prior to that album they were dabbling in different genres you know they were you know they went through the new metal they well not necessarily new metal but they were using a lot of production techniques from a lot of new metal bands and and cut, some of it was very abrasive so instead of incorporating what was happening hip and happening on radio or out in you know um, in the rock world what made this album so great was let's just play like the scorpions the classic yeah, it's kind of like what sound Judas priest did with firepower yes so, get yeah, back to basics course, yeah van halen did with a different uh with um a different kind of truth yes yeah. yes absolutely yeah. so um yeah and i was actually tossing and turning whether i was going to include that in the top three because it definitely that album got a lot of uh, circulation in the Kerr household but um had to go for the the three more um of the classic era fantastic show guys thank you you bring home the bacon yet again so uh joe b please check him out on his youtube channel joe you got any um shows coming up that you want to talk yeah about? so Your i just interviewed uh, the um yeah so it's waste some time with average joe and um i'm doing mainly interviews and i just interviewed uh neil davis who's having the latest it's it, it started as creatures fest but now it's uh it's a uh, kiss goodbye to cancer and it sounds it's going to be a great event it's right it's like a half hour from where i live now um so it's gonna be a lot of fun and bruce kulik's gonna play the whole live three album on the second night um chris jericho is supposed to be there and he pulled out so i'm kind of ticked off about that but no that was my latest interview it's all about that uh what's going to happen with this uh kiss goodbye to cancer and i'm hoping to have you on peter pretty well, soon yeah to- I was about yeah. to say, by the time this show uh, drops, um, we're going to be talking about our favourite Kiss album. So, definitely, um, no, yeah. won't give anything away, but we'll be just talking about, yeah, um, our favourite Kiss album or albums. So, we'll wait and see. And you can also see Joe; he's on plenty of um, shows on the Contrarians. So, just look up the Contrarians; you'll see a stack of panel shows, and he's just always good value. So, love to have you on the show, Joe, as always. Always and- fun. And John the Music Nut, the most busiest man on YouTube, <laughs> My Music Corner. Uh, John Clow's a wonderful series on Armoured Saint and uh, Grant's Rock Warehouse. And is there anything you want to quickly plug, John? I just did a show on Tim's Vinyl Confessions with Tim Derling and Mike Lodano. We did a show on Y&C. We were trying to convince Mike Lod- Lodano that Y&C was a great band. The end. We had him purchase some Lion T, but that was a wonderful show. It was great to be on that show. Yeah, I watched that show. That was a lot of fun. And it's always good to see Mike sweating and eventually, um, you know, being convinced by the uh, the other panelists. So, no, it's just that was a lot of fun. But, uh, no, good, good stuff. Please like and subscribe this little channel, um, Rock Daydream Nation. Um, plenty of content. Tell us what you think of the scorpions see there it is again the please tell us what you think of scorpions favorite albums favorite songs um the one thing's guaranteed you'll see these fine men on a show on rock day dream nation very soon cheers cheers <laughs>